Wednesday, Chinese President Xi Jinping spoke at a gathering to mark the 40th anniversary of the establishment of China's Shenzhen Special Economic Zone, which has transformed a small fishing village into a modern metropolis of over 13 million people. So what were the key points of this speech? What does Shenzhen's development over the past four decades say about China's process of reform and opening up? And with plans to turn Shenzhen into a pilot city for socialism, what does that mean for this bustling city? To discuss these issues, I'm joined by Professor Jiang Gong of the University of International Business and Economics, Hong Wei Main, Principal Liaison Officer for Hong Kong at Shenzhen Tianhai Authority, and Marco Forster, Senior Associate at Dezen Shirite Associates, based in Shenzhen. And that is our topic. This is Dialogue. I'm Zhong Shi in Beijing. Well, first of all, unlike Beijing or Shanghai, Shenzhen is a less familiar name to many of our international viewers watching, but it's a world-class city. It's China's first-tier city, uh, no matter what metrics you, you apply to assess the southern city of Shenzhen. I want to begin with Mr. Forster. I understand you relocated to Shenzhen from Beijing less than a year ago. Uh, how has that experience been for you, and what is your impression of Shenzhen? Well, first of all, uh, thank you for having me, and, and that's completely correct. I just uh, moved from Beijing to Shenzhen earlier this year, and, and the main difference, of course, is uh, that Beijing is more political. Companies are there uh, for, for government affairs and so on, and, and Shenzhen is really uh, where business is being done. Um, if I would describe it with one word, I think that would be agile. Um, the management of foreign enterprises that has been traveling to Hong Kong, for example, uh, oftentimes uh, goes to Shenzhen for a visit. Uh, I maybe accompany uh, them for that, and uh, it's really easy for them to connect here, find local partners to set up a joint venture or their own company. And, and for tech and, and foreign startups, I think um, Shenzhen is just a hardware heaven. I mean, uh, you can have the idea in the morning and literally already have your first uh, prototype uh, in your own hands in the evening. So uh, that's really what uh, Shenzhen, uh, uh, what makes Shenzhen attractive, yeah. Uh, the business environment in Shenzhen, I wish to discuss more later in our program. My two other guests have not made the relocation to Shenzhen, not yet, but I saw both of them smile and nod when you were talking about uh, what you liked about the environment in Shenzhen. We know that President Xi Jinping made an important speech at the anniversary um, today, I, I want to circle back to that speech made by the president where he basically uh, summed up the success uh, in the last four decades since Shenzhen was designated as a special economic zone. He also laid out his vision for the future of the city. Let's take a listen. The construction of special economic zones in the new era should uphold socialism with Chinese characteristics. We will move forward towards a new development stage, implement the new concepts, promote high-quality development, and build a new pattern. We will advance reform and opening up from a higher starting point and begin a new chapter in building special economic zones. Based on your different backgrounds, I believe that speech spoke to you in different ways. Professor Gong, I want to come to you now. You are an economist. Right. When you hear the president's speech today, um, and he talks about developing Shenzhen into a pilot zone, all the while upholding mm -hmm. socialism mm -hmm. with Chinese characteristics, right. what kind of pictures about Shenzhen's tomorrow <coughs> does that speech paint for you? Um, I think uh, there's a little bit of a difference from um, uh, you know what the, uh, the Shenzhen has been going through in, a, in the last 40 years. You know, in the, in the early days, for example, we probably really didn't talk too much about you know people-centered growth model, right? I mean, uh, Mr. Deng Xiaoping said that let a few people get rich first, right? Mm. Um, and I think it's very much pro-growth at the time we tried to develop economy at whatever cost and, and, and uh, that kind of things. But now I think we enter into a new era now. Um, and, and, and when we need to look at, look, take a state seat back and look at you know, the, the other issues that we haven't really uh, thought about, uh, things like you know, pro-people pro growth, environment, for example, right? So you know, these are the things that uh, I think very much high on uh, President Xi's agenda. Uh, and I think moving forward, uh, Shenzhen's uh, 
uh, development will continue to grow, I think, and it's, it's continue to, you know, uh, go down that path. But I think, um, you know, the government probably is going to take uh, uh, more measures, you know, pay more attention to its citizens. Uh, it has you know, 1.13 mm. million people, um, and it's a, it's, it's a great place to live, and I, there's no doubt about it. Um, I'm not going to relocate there. I'm very much devoted to uh, my university here in Beijing. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I've, been, I've been there many, many times, and mm. it's a beautiful city. It's a lot to offer. And uh, you know, it, it, when I talk to uh, many foreign diplomats uh, here in China, as well as outside of China, they are really shocked to see the experience of this city. You know, so how many companies have been born in that city, have mm. grown in and, and thrive into big, huge companies these days. You know, about 400 uh, Chinese indigenous, mostly um, uh, private companies headquartered in Shenzhen. Mm. They are the engine of growth for this great city. Mm. Shenzhen's GDP is thirty thousand dollars. You know, way more than many, many cities, leading cities per capita. China. Per capita, I'm sorry, per capita. Yeah. So uh, it, it, it's, it's a success story beyond you know imagination. So I think um, you know the experience in Shenzhen so far has been widely, widely successful. It validates the model of uh, socialist, uh, 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 socialist market economy with Chinese characteristics. Mm. Um, and I think moving forward, you know, we just have to be, have a little bit, little bit different focus around. Got it, yeah. got it. Uh, that's another important topic. What did Shenzhen do right? We'll talk about that in just a moment. Mr. Hong, I want to come to you now. In your line of work, Shenzhen certainly makes an interesting an exciting case, which we're all exploring today. Um, what part of the president's speech today speak to you in particular? Uh, I think it's a bit similar to what Professor Gong just said. Uh, it's this thing called people-centric development, people-centric mm. growth. Uh, he specifically mentioned that whether life is good or not, the people has the most say. Right. Okay, that's why the, this, this range of reform, if you look at the history of reform in the past 40 years, it's mainly about opening up. It's about making it easier to do business, right? It's making it easier for people to set up businesses. It's about, um, you know, stock market, this kind of reform. This time, they, they, those things will still go on, but this time there's an emphasis on people, people-centric. So it, it will talk about employment, education, medical, social security, housing, retirement, food safety, environment and uh, social safety. So these are the things that are very close, de near and dear to the mind of people living in Shenzhen, mm. and that's why it will be one of the focuses of the next reform. I want to circle back the topic just now, which I believe will help our viewers better understand why we're discussing this important anniversary today, and that topic is, what did Shenzhen do right? Because the way we understand it is that Shenzhen was able to develop from not more than just a fishing village mm -hmm. to a world-class metropolis in the span mm -hmm. of four decades that, you know, that is branded as the Shenzhen speed, mm -hmm. miraculous development. Mm -hmm. What people have, obser have observed is a very visible shift in the economic mode of Shenzhen, where in the very first beginning after four men opening up, it was not more than just a processing center, right, right where local right. companies took orders from overseas firms. Mm -hmm. um, they made use of Shenzhen's geographical location close to Hong Kong That's right. and promoted trade That's and exports. Right. What we then witnessed was an upgrade right. from processed in right. Shenzhen right to made in Shenzhen, to created in Shenzhen, exactly. with that rise of homegrown Chinese brands that are now internationally right. renowned. Professor Gong, how would you categorize that process? How did Shenzhen seize the opportunities? Yeah, what you mentioned, you know, like, these are the stories like 30-some you know, years ago, but later on, as you said, it's totally transformed. I think in that transformation, the role of the government is very important. Shenzhen, the municipal government in Shenzhen is probably the most pro-business government in the entire world, not just in China. I mean, if you talk to the government officials, I actually talked to you know, the, the deputy mayor, the, some you know, high-level government officials in, in, in Shenzhen. When you talk to these people, it, it, it's, it's, you know, it, it's, it's, it's laser focused on pro-business growth. Mm. So it's, you, know, you have this mentality in the city that the government goes out of its way trying to help companies, try to, make, try to help them survive, uh, to grow, to thrive. 
So, um, and also I think uh, the city is, is, you know, you start out as a blank sheet basically, right? Mm. And, 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 and they have developed a whole set of measures to attract talents. You know, this city would not be possible without the talents from all parts of China. You know, you go to Shenzhen, the local official language is, is not the local, you know, Cantonese dialect, right? It's the, it's the Mandarin Chinese. So, you know, most of the people in the city, they're young, they're vibrant people, I mean, they're very energetic, and most importantly, they, they're actually coming from outside of the province, outside of the city. So, so you know, a combination of these factors um, make it a fertile ground for doing business, make innovations, uh, and, and, and make a living for young people. So it, it's this kind of a sort of a whole of a city mentality, in my opinion. Mm. It, it's for business all the way from the government down to average folks, employees, that has made this city jointly a widely, widely success story in China. Mm. Mr. Forster, you're the one to talk to about the role of government there in Shenzhen. So as a talent yourself who was successfully attracted by what Shenzhen had to offer, do you agree with what Professor Gong just said about uh, the role of the Shenzhen government in facilitating businesses? Um, definitely. So, so I think the government here has achieved uh, what many uh, municipal uh, governments around the world can be uh, quite jealous of, and that is the single largest uh, wealth creation the world has ever seen in such a, a short amount of time. And uh, I think these uh, new regulations back then in Shenzhen 40 years ago, opening up to uh, foreign direct investment, um, have really uh, skyrocketed uh, the economy and, and really laid a good foundation for the rest of the country there. And um, I think what's uh, to be seen now, uh, uh, also with uh, President uh, Xi's speech again, uh, is uh, to really create a second wave of reform and again uh, make Shenzhen the pace setter to, to do what uh, it has done uh, before because what could be done uh, 40 years ago uh, can now basically be, uh, be done all over the rest of the country. So where does mm. Shenzhen now step again ahead? Um, that's to be seen. Mr. Hong, you are in a position to observe what has taken shape and taken hold in Shenzhen over the past four decades. So when people come up to you and say, why is the Shenzhen story a success story? How would you tell them about what happened in Shenzhen? I, I think there are two parts. Uh, one is just you, uh, the, the other professor just mentioned uh, about business friendliness, okay, uh, uh, willing to help business. I'll give you one small example. A few years back, I was invited by an American guy to go to Shenzhen to give a lecture to a group of startups, you know, uh, foreign startups. Mm. And then it was a Sunday, they gave me an address, I took a taxi over, only to find out the actual lecture venue was the hall of the party's committee of Shenzhen. Mm. <laughs> on a Sunday. So, you know, the government actually lend them their hall for a seminar, you know, mm. to a, f a group of foreigners. I mean, this is unheard of. And secondly, I think what's most important is the innovation and reform is in the blood of Xinjiang people, mm. both the government and the people. Mm -hmm. So no acceptance of status quo. Mm. Anything can be broken. You know, what was illegal yesterday become you know, gray area today become legal tomorrow and become encouraged the day after tomorrow. We have witnessed uh, since 40 years ago a lot of these things happened. You know, Shenzhen was the pioneer and leader of these kind of reforms, one after another. And then they are so used to it that it just becomes their second nature. So anything, they say, okay, let's try it out. Let's try, if we fail this time, we try it in three months' time. You know, it's this kind of mentality that helped them to get through all the hurdles, which obviously there was a lot in the past. Remember 40 years ago, China was a different country, you know, there were a lot of rules and regulations that had inherited from before. And they overcome it one by one, slowly but surely, not without hurdle, not without opposition, but they did it and that's what we see today, Shenzhen, after 40 years. I, I want to stay on the topic of innovation mm -hmm. and reform because many people describe Shenzhen as the Silicon Valley mm -hmm. of China. Here are some numbers that are very telling about uh, Shenzhen's position as its home to uh, innovation. Uh, Shenzhen is home to high-tech companies like Huawei, like Tencent, right. like uh, DJI, the drone manufacturer, right. uh, a, a whole lot of that. And on average, there are 8.5 state-level high-tech enterprises mm -hmm. per square kilometer in Shenzhen, and an average of 71 invention patents are authorized, get this, every day. 
Professor, how did Shenzhen become a magnet for innovation-driven companies? And when they do attract those companies, how did it become a testing ground for them? And they, a lot of them turned out to be successful. Well, there's a wealth of studies actually looking to you know where does innovation take place, how it takes place. Um, but in general, you know, we economists tend to agree that it has a customer pattern. There's no doubt about that. I mean, uh, in the United States, for example, there's the Silicon Valley, there's the Boston area for medical research, right, and Southern California, um, and, and we call it you know three musketeers. Here in China, I mean, I, I think uh, we, we say that Shenzhen is the Silicon Valley here in China. Maybe a few other cities probably would disagree, right? Mm. Uh, but in, in any case. Uh, in China, we have also three places that are full of innovations. Beijing is one, Shanghai is one, and the, you know, Shanghai Nanjing Corridor. They have a lot of innovations as well. Uh, definitely, you know, the Shenzhen area is also, you know, one of the vibrant places for innovation. Um, and other than that, I think there are, you know, s several factors that you know, economists have studied why innovation is taking place in these places. Right. First of all, you know, it has to be a, a good place, uh, attracting a talents, uh, a livable place. Uh, and also it has a very strong educational base, for example. Uh, people are highly educated. Uh, there's a very good uh, capital market, for example, uh, the VC funds uh, invest into this, uh, and they have an exit strategy. You know, you, have, you can have take these companies to, 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 uh, to public. So, you know, all these other factors, uh, none of them, I think, uh, Shenzhen is basically missing. You know, it has all the ingredients for these things to happen. Mm. Um, and I think, uh, I, 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 in my personal view, I think what's most important behind innovation is really talents. You know, at the end of the day, it's the talents that really counts. Innovation is something that, you know, it just it's just like a perfect storm. You know, you have to have all the ingredients in place. Let these people leave these people alone, and, mm. and something wonderful will happen, right? So, um, it, so it, it, the talents are really important. And Shenzhen has done a wonderful job of attracting talents mm. uh, no matter how you look at it you know uh, I think probably one thing um, that's a little bit sort of falling short is that Shenzhen still doesn't have a sort of a world-class university at this point as mm. a matter of fact I know uh, I, w I participated in a study jointly between our university and OECD and we did a study for Shenzhen and uh, one of the recommendations we made actually in that study is that uh, at this point you know, Shenzhen needs to uh, at least build its uh, local universities into world-class universities. All the major um, metropolises in the world, right? Mm. They have something like this: Boston, Harvard, MIT, San Francisco, uh, Stanford. Uh, Stanford. Yeah, so they all have these kind of things. Uh, and and Shenzhen, I, I know the municipal government is working very hard trying to do something like this. They've been trying to attract uh, foreign universities, for example, to set up bases here in, uh, there in Shenzhen. There have uh, been a couple of branches from right. They're, first they're, class they're, universities. they're building they're building those branch campuses over mm. there. And, and this is also, you know, they're all part of the efforts to uh, move in that direction. Mm. Um, but but I'm very hopeful, and I'm you know I'm very bullish on uh, uh, the bullish on uh, future. Mm. Um, that uh, you know this is one resounding example of China's development model success. Right. If you're trying to find an example of you know the success of to validate you know the the legitimacy of the the socialist uh, market economy with Chinese characteristics, you go to visit Shenzhen. Mm. Right, and you visit, you go to visit Shenzhen. So, uh, so that's a that's a wonderful, wonderful story, in my opinion. Got it, uh, Mr. Forster. Your mm. answers to this question might be very personal. Obviously, innovation has driven the growth in Shenzhen, and we want that to continue. We want innovation to continue to play as a competitive edge of Shenzhen. Uh, why do you think innovation was able to take hold and blossom? in Shenzhen. Right, so, so first of all, um, as again mentioned, opening up uh, to foreign direct investment and also the, the industries that have settled in Shenzhen, I think, uh, play a big role in why innovation has settled in Shenzhen. So uh, we got uh, early on Nokia and, and for example, uh, Sanyo uh, settling in, in Shilko. So it has always been very electronics and, and tech driven. Uh, later on, we had our uh, we had the own uh, domestic market players coming there with the big uh, tech giants that you've mentioned, and and overall, I think uh, the city uh, uh, attracts uh, global talents and as well as domestic talents. And uh, I think the the issue of uh, the universities is not a too big uh, one as uh, there are a lot of uh, universities, high class, world class universities uh, in nearby in the region. Uh, there's the Greater Bay Area, which also attracts a lot of uh, domestic talent into the whole region as a whole. 
Um, we in our firm have lots of colleagues that come from uh, that studied in Hong Kong that are originally from Guangzhou. So uh, with a cluster there in place, uh, a larger cluster than uh, what we see around Shanghai and Beijing. And of course, uh, the weather down here, uh, I think uh, that's uh, a lot to uh, provide for, for young people. Mm. Mr. Hong, Shenzhen obviously knows where its strengths lie and knows what it has done well with, and innovation is one of them. Um, Shenzhen wants, it, wants its own business card to say that we are an innovation-driven city, and we will continue to support uh, innovation and tech companies. In order to do that, what more will Shenzhen have to do? And in the comprehensive plan for reforms laid out just leading up to the anniversary, is there a part that speaks to you about further supporting and helping innovation in Shenzhen? Uh, there, there, there will be. But I just want to add a little bit on the, the, the reason why it was successful. I think there's more than, uh, you know, uh, there's a three areas. One is the role of the government. The role mm. of the government in Shenzhen is they attract talent, but they leave them alone. They do not tell the talent what to do, mm -hmm. but they give them tax breaks and incentive, and they now even do venture capital investment. They have a seed fund, right. mm. uh, which they will compose 40% of any VC seed fund. So the government will come up with 40% of the money. And, you know, that is the role of the government, you know, attract talent, uh, uh, support them, but leave them alone. Secondly is the culture. Uh, Shenzhen is a migrant city, so it's totally migrant friendly. There mm. was a sign a long time ago I saw in the Shenzhen airport that said, when you come, you become a Shenzhener. Now, try to do that in Shanghai and Beijing, you know, it's a very <laughs> different city. Mm. And the third one is the proximity to Hong Kong. I mean, I'm a Hong Kong guy, so I want to talk about that as well. The first investment into Tencent was from PCCW. Okay, DJI's Wang Tao graduated from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Mm. So there's a lot of talent and money flow from Hong Kong to Shenzhen that helps to build it into the innovation hub today. Mm. Now, there are issues. I mean, if you look at, again, the people-centric, the property price in Shenzhen is way too expensive. Okay, there is not enough secondary education. Yes, they are building universities, but there's not enough secondary schools. Oh, medical services is not adequate. Okay, these are things that now is actually keeping talents. When they're making the decision of moving to Shenzhen, they have second thought. They say, oh, maybe I move to Dongguan instead, which is mm. close enough. Still have a lot of talent. So Shenzhen need to solve this kind of problems. It's no longer about the growth that he, they are very good at. It's about the sustainability, about making sure people feel good when they work there, when they live there. And that is a challenge that Shenzhen had been facing for the past few years, mm. and it has put very high on its priority list right now. Mm. Professor Gong raised a very interesting point just now when we say that Shenzhen is the Silicon Valley of China. Maybe other areas and regions don't disagree as they're competing right. to be innovation driven areas. Also, Zhongguanzun here in Beijing, right. uh, the Yangtze River Delta revolving around Shanghai, and then we have Shenzhen and the Greater Bay Area. Right. Mr. Hong, I do want to put that question in the context of the Greater Bay Area where the synergy between Hong Kong, Macau, and other cities in Guangdong province, Shenzhen included, is crucial to cluster development. Uh, how will that ambitious cluster development plan further propel Shenzhen into its next stage of development? What is Shenzhen's role in that cluster? Uh, you asking me? Um, I think that is, uh, it, it is very important. Um, the Great Bay Area overall development plan actually highlights some of the areas. But one, what is most important is there are three, well, more than three, but there are three major Bay Areas, okay? The, the one Jingjingji close to Tianjin and Beijing, the one the Yangtze River, the, the Hangzhou Bay, and then the Guangdong, you know, uh, uh, Greater Bay. Here is the only place we have one country, two systems. We have two special administration regions. We have different laws, different currency, um, you know, many different things. In my opinion, differences will encourage innovation. It's when everything is the same, there will be no innovation. Mm. Here we have difference, we have clash of values, and you know, we have clash of culture, but that actually creates innovation. Secondly is the international city Hong Kong itself 
even though there's issues and problems and people talk about the death of Hong Kong for a long time, but still, it is still the most international city of China. It also, it's, it is an international finance center. It's also an international talent center. A lot of foreign talents, they rather choose to live in Hong Kong instead of Shenzhen, but they are w far you know, more willing to travel around the region. Mm. And I'm seeing that will help the overall development. And Shenzhen, with its geographical location, most cl you know, close to Hong Kong, uh, can take the advantage of both sides. They can en you know, enjoy the advantage of Hong Kong, attracting the talents and the foreign investment, but at the same time enjoying the local uh, you know, the, the socialists with, with Chinese characteristic, the kind of efficiency, the kind mm. of, you know, uh, uh, emphasis and government power. Mm. Uh, we don't have a lot of time left. I want to end with you, Professor Gong here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the plan for comprehensive reforms rolled out leading up to this anniversary mm -hmm. say that uh, China wants to turn Shenzhen into a pilot zone. Right. Uh, uh, of socialism with Chinese characteristics. We talked about socialism and Chinese characteristics just now, mm -hmm. but let's zoom in on the pilot zone, meaning that if things work out in Shenzhen, mm -hmm. they could potentially be applied to other cities and regions. Mm -hmm. Help us understand what that means and what, what could be some of those experiences and lessons from Shenzhen. I think the, the most important crust of uh, you know, this pilot zone idea is that we're going to see another era of massive opening up in China. And it's going to happen first in Shenzhen. I think the government tends to you know, take a sort of a, a very characteristic Chinese approach that's uh, you know, centered on taking experiments first and then sort of deploy on a mass scale, right? Mm. So Shenzhen is going to be the testing ground. We're going to see massive amount of the f uh, opening up, in my opinion, in the financial market, in other markets. And, uh, uh, you know, we're going to see that uh, if this model is going to uh, continue to succeed, and I'm very bullish that it's go it is going to continue to, to, to succeed. Um, uh, you know, the previous guest mentioned a very important point about one country, two systems. I think, you know, this issue is important in the context we just talked about, you know, further opening up. Um, President Xi's speech today, out of the ten things he mentioned, right, one thing is about that. You know, we, we need to stick to the one country, uh, two systems. And I think, you know, the current problems uh, currently, you know, we're seeing in Hong Kong is actually a great opportunity uh, for future further integration between the, you know, the mainland side of the bay and Hong Kong and Macau side of the bay. So, um, you know, this is uh, an indication that China is continue to really, really opening up. You know, we're not, we are facing a lot of problems today internationally in, in the midst of the, the just ravaging pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're seeing, uh, you know, some public opinions against China is probably not so good these days, and the Americans initiating this trade war and other things coming from the White House. But aside of all these things, aside from all these things, I think uh, China is going to continue to be open, and open in a way that is probably unimaginable to these politicians in Washington, D.C. So, um, and they're going to have another look at what really means by Chinese socialism with China, uh, uh, socialist market economy with Chinese capital. We're really going to have a market economy, a globally uh, opening up market economy, in mm. my opinion. <coughs> Understood. I have really enjoyed our discussion today. Professor Jiang Gong, Mr. Marco Forster, and Mr. Hong Wei Ming, thank you so much for your participation. Being recognized as a potential pilot zone is a great honor but comes with great responsibilities. We'll keep watching. Thank you for watching Dialogue.